Kontaktbeschränkungen. Verantwortung. Shutdown. Hygienekonzept. Wir sind in einer sehr, sehr kritischen Phase in Deutschland. Noch einmal eine Kraftanstrengung. Bei den SBB Baskets heißt es wieder Stillstand. Kein Training, kein Spielbetrieb. Höchstwahrscheinlich eine verlängerte Saison. Wenn die Spiele nachgeholt werden sollten, das bedeutet wiederum zwei Monate länger, mehr Kosten, weniger Einnahmen, weil nach wie vor keine Zuschauer und das halt weiterhin un ungewiss bleibt. Wir spielen in einer Amateurliga und werden dem sofort wird uns immer gesagt, ihr seid Amateure, aber wir haben Profikader. Das ist für mich ein Riesenunterschied. Aber der Deutsche Basketballbund hat ja ganz klar gesagt, dass alles, was unter Pro B ist, Amateursport ist. Und somit fallen wir darunter, ob wir das jetzt toll finden oder nicht. Es ist halt so, ja. Wir wollen raus aus dieser Liga, wir möchten in die Pro B. Das ist Ziel Nummer eins und das Ziel wird immer mehr bestärkt, eben auch durch die Pandemie. Das wäre das Schlimmste, dass die Saison abgebrochen wird und äh, am Ende der Saison kein Aufsteiger und kein Absteiger feststellt, weil die Saison nicht mehr zur Hälfte gespielt werden konnte. Es wäre wirklich eine reine Katastrophe, wenn wir nächstes Jahr erneut um einen Aufstieg spielen müssten. Das, äh, wenn ich ehrlich bin, denke ich nicht mal drüber nach, weil ich hoffe, dass es auf keinen Fall so weit kommt. And it hurts my heart. Cause I don't do lazy. Work so hard that they call you crazy. It's crazy. I be lame if they fade me. Yeah, I got game, but I never let them play me. Never let them see me sweat. If they don't see me rep, it's cause they never even see me yet. I stay focused, so never will they see me stress and they notice. With me, it's like they see the best. From the time I was a kid, Michael Jordan was it. He was, you know, I've never seen Jesus, but I seen Michael Jordan, and that was enough. You know, he was he was dark like me. You know, it's a thing in the states too. When I was growing up, that dark, the darker you are, the people look down on you and stuff like that. He gave me pride in my skin color. He gave me pride to be, you know, be me. You know, with me being my, having to share in the same name. I mean, of course, his name is Michael Jordan, but Jordan, I walk with pride. I wore my name with pride, so it gave me a sense of at an early age to stick my chest out and be like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Like his success was my success in a kind of a sense and I, and I owned it, I still do, you know, I still do. I find comfort here, but home is, is definitely not, not, not a word I would uh, describe it as, but I definitely am comfortable here. I'm not a typical neighbor that they will ever have. So it's, it's just always interesting and now that They little got comfortable with me a little bit. We have one little girl across the hall. She used to get scared every time she saw me, but now she speaks and stuff. So it's just, it's becoming, it's, it's, it's weird to say, but it's becoming almost more homely. But as far as home, I only have one home, you know, and that's, you know, where, where my family is, Little Rock and stuff. So that's, that's my home. So I also went to Little Rock Central High School, high school that's uh, notorious for uh, being one of the first uh, high schools in the South to allow black kids to go, to go to school there. So being taught that history every day, walking those same halls every day, it recognized to me at an early age that you're, you're part of history, you're doing something special. It gave me value in myself when, you know, a lot of times I wasn't looking for it. Don't underestimate the climb you have before you. Each day we will require 100% of yourself. This is not by anyone. I think I wrote this myself. Uh, what I usually, every week I'll write something up here that it just, you know, it comes to me. I don't know what it is or what it is. It's just a, a little inspiration that, that I get at a time. And uh, this quote just reminds me, whenever I read stuff like this, it just puts me in the moment. It, it, it lets me know, you know, to, to, today is the day. You gotta make the uh, best of yourself. Current situation is we're paused at the moment. So no basketball for the month of November. So I'm here still in Bomberstedt on lockdown and hopefully we can get, we can get in, in back in the gym sometime soon. But as of now, my gym is at home.
going back home to England for a little break. Uh, we got a month off in the season. You know, unfortunately, COVID is what it is. Um, the league stopped for a month, so heading back to see some family, rest up a little bit, um, and hopefully be back out here at the beginning of December to uh, continue the season. Uh, you wanna know what love like? I love my dog like I love life. Henny solid, not the scrub type. That's my main, and I'm saying you would think we had the same blood type. Show love with a pound of death, whether bros or some thugs. Feel like I was just here picking you up, man. Oh, no, man. The one and the only everybody know me everybody know me everybody know me brother with the homie brother with the homie hey brother yeah yeah my brother so bye bye appreciate you guys stay safe hopefully see you soon the one and the only Ich fliege jetzt äh, nach Kalifornien zurück, ähm, um äh, meine Familie wiederzusehen. Währenddessen werde ich in Amerika weiter trainieren und schauen, was passiert. Also, wir sind ready, das ist das für schön. Und ich glaube, das wird uns auch nicht irgendwie ähm, also stoppen, dass, dass wir, also dadurch, dass die Saison stoppt. Ich glaube, wir werden alle weiter hart trainieren, genauso wie wir im Sommer alle trainiert haben. Ähm, jeder hat so seinen eigenen ähm, inneren Drive, dass er, dass er weiter trainieren will und muss, ähm, um sich fit zu halten. Weil, weil wir, wollen, wir wollen jetzt diese Meisterschaft gewinnen, wir wollen aufsteigen. Ähm, letztes Jahr haben wir ganz knapp verpasst und wir, haben alle den, wir wissen alle, was letztes Jahr passiert ist, so ungefähr. Wir, wir wissen, was wir machen müssen, damit es klappt dieses Jahr. You wanna know what love like? I love my dog like I love life. Henny solid, not the scrub type. That's my main, and I'm saying you would think we had the same blood type. Show love with a pound of death. Whether bros or some thugs, we bind it with death. If we lost our way, we found it back. And I know I really like the sound of that. Rollin' with the homie, no fakes in the bonies, the one and the only. Es steht ja fest, erstmal gut, dass sie wiederkommen. Das steht fest. Ähm, wir haben denen jetzt aufgrund der Situation auch so ein bisschen freie Hand gegeben ähm, und äh, haben denen auch eingeräumt, dass sie erstmal nach Hause fliegen dürfen zu ihren Familien. Ähm, natürlich auch unter dem Aspekt, dass sie versuchen, sich körperlich fit zu halten. Ich denke, das werden sie auch tun, weil es ist ja klar, wenn es weitergeht, geht es sofort weiter und sofort heißt, nach vier Wochen wieder trainieren, eine Woche, dann Spiel, 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 trainieren, Spiel. Ich glaube, dass die Jungs wissen, dass wir ein Ziel haben und dass sie trotz der Pandemie, trotz des Lockdowns weiterhin in irgendeiner Form trainieren müssen. Ja, wir sind in der Lage jetzt zu trainieren. Äh, dreimal die Woche ist im Moment der Deal äh, mit den Jungs, die da sind. Einige der Jungs sind ja auch äh, abgereist. Und äh, ja, ich meine, wir sind super happy, dass wir die Möglichkeit haben, das zu machen. Und ja, ich glaube, es ist äh, eine schöne Sache, einfach das jetzt in den schwierigen Zeiten trotzdem noch ein bisschen Basketball zu machen. Ja, ist natürlich super hart für uns alle. Ne? Ich meine, wir, ein Großteil der Jungs verdienen halt ihren, ihren Lebensunterhalt mit, mit Basketball. Äh, so wie ich auch und die anderen beiden Coaches auch. Und äh, jetzt ist es schon zum zweiten Mal in dieser Saison oder in diesem Jahr passiert, dass uns unser, unser Job, aber gleichzeitig auch irgendwie unsere größte Leidenschaft genommen wird. Äh, damit ist es halt super schwierig umzugehen. Ich, ich kann es natürlich verstehen, es ist eine, wahrscheinlich die richtige Entscheidung, den Amateursport ruhen zu lassen in der schwierigen Phase. Ich weiß auch, dass es logisch ist, dass die Regionalliga dann als Amateurliga gilt. Nichtsdestotrotz äh, wäre es natürlich super, wenn wir schaffen, die Saison irgendwie zu Ende zu bekommen und, und weiter zu spielen. Today is Thanksgiving, so a big, big holiday in the States. So um, unfortunately, I'm not home. But now I'm getting all the messages from home. Uh, happy Thanksgiving and everything. Now it's kind of making me homesick and stuff. So my oven doesn't close all the way, so it'll uh, it'll open, letting the heat out. So 
so I had to figure out a way. So I got a workout band and obviously a weight. So I had to figure out a way to keep it closed. So, so far it works. <laughs> The longer I've been here, it's gotten harder to be away from so long. I mean, it's simple. I'm a traditional mama's boy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really close to my mother. Uh, my, my dad is definitely in my life. We are, you know, we're great being my dad, but my, my mom, my, we, she raised me. I was, I lived in the house with her. It was just me and her. So it's just our, our relationship is very close. Yeah, my mom is, that's my best friend. That's my girl, you know. Everything, I work hard for her, you know, anytime I'm having a rough day, I could call her. Anytime I have a rough day on the court, I think about, you know, why I'm doing it or why, why I work so hard at what I do. And, you know, it, it always traces back to her. My mom had a child before I was born uh, and then he had passed away. We got very young when he was six. So my mom had me at a late age. She was 36. So uh, I think she just put her all into me. My mom is like, my mom, she you know, she took care of everything as far as like shaping me into that type of person I am. Uh, watching her work as hard as she did, you know, to provide for me. Uh, the the amount of life that she gave me every day, as far as like if, if she was having a bad day, she would never let me see it. If we were struggling financially or anything, she would never let me see it. If you know, if whatever the case, she, she, she wouldn't eat so I could eat, you know. At a very young age, you know, we moved around a lot. Uh, we, you know, our neighborhoods weren't great, but Little Rock is just not a great area. It's not a lot of opportunities in that sense. So it was just, a, it was a struggle, you know, and, and not recognized. I mean, but at the time I didn't know any better. I thought everyone struggled or this was what life was like. I didn't know that there was, you know, a, a different style of living. She would go to work from eight o'clock. I don't see her again till six o'clock, you know? So, I mean, at that time, I'm out of school for a couple hours, you know, and uh, I'm uh, I'm in, you know, after school programs or everything. And when she does come home, she's dead tired from work. I mean, she's worked all day, but she still has to, you know, cook and be a mom to me. And she still, you know, was always able to do it. You know, she was always able to make sure I wasn't in trouble. In Little Rock, there were a lot of gangs, you know, and I had the courage to say no. You know, I'm not I'm not going to join that. I'm not going to, you know, walk that path. That's that's not the path I want to walk. And just the courage to walk on my own. So she gave me courage to be myself. She gave me courage, you know, to walk my own path, which in turn, you know, I, I have the courage to come to Germany by myself. I, I, I know she struggles with it. I mean, but I struggle with it, too, you know, but I, this. She doesn't show it. She doesn't. She won't. She won't try to, you know, make me feel guilty for being away or something like that. But it's definitely tough for her. But it's, you know, it's tough for me also. And uh, hopefully, I can get over here to enjoy this experience of Europe. So after Corona ends, I would like to get her to, you know, experience some traveling to see that her son, you know, has a, a little bit of a name in Europe to, the, you know, to where like yo, I have, uh, I've done something while I was out here. So. Ja. Letztes Jahr, ich glaube, ich hatte mit Jordan, äh, da waren wir in Bremen darüber geredet. Er hat das Jahr davor in Rostock gespielt, in der Pro A, selber eine Halle mit dreieinhalbtausend Zuschauern, hat gespielt in, in Chemnitz, äh, in der Arena, wo, wo bis 5000 Zuschauer zugelassen werden und so weiter und in, in vielen großen Hallen einfach gespielt. Und dann äh, sitzen wir dort auf der typischen Holzbank, die man aus dem Schulunterricht kennt. Er ist seit eineinhalb Jahre nicht mehr zu Hause in den USA gewesen. Das ist auch, glaube ich, was, was ich noch nie von einem amerikanischen Spieler gehört habe. Äh, der sagt, ich, ich bleibe den kompletten Sommer hier und jetzt haben wir einen Shutdown. Er, er bleibt trotzdem hier, weil er sagt, es ist besser so und ich möchte niemanden anstecken und ich möchte das Risiko nicht eingehen. Und im Moment verhält man sich einfach so. Jedes Mal, wenn ich Jordan sehe, fragt er mich, was geht bei, bei dir, Phil? Und ich sage ihm, <lacht> gar nichts. Also ich, ich habe zurzeit auch leider echt nicht viel zu bieten. So. Ich bin, glaube ich, 
einer der wenigen Leute, die sich echt in diese Situation äh, reinversetzen können. Mir ging es damals, als ich ans College gegangen bin, sehr, sehr ähnlich, würde ich sagen. Äh, es ist super scheiße, sage ich mal ganz ehrlich. Es ist, äh, es ist super kacke. Und ja, man hat seine Mitspieler, mit denen man ma Sachen machen kann, so außerhalb von Basketball. Und dann fühlt man sich natürlich ein Stück weit mal ein paar Stunden lang nicht so alleine. So. Aber im Endeffekt das, das Gefühl von allein, vom Alleine sein, glaube ich, ist echt kein schönes Gefühl. Ich glaube, dass es super schwierig ist. Ich glaube, dass, dass Jordan auf jeden Fall eine Menge Erfahrung hat, so wie es ist, in Deutschland zu sein. Aber ich glaube, niemand hat irgendeine Erfahrung, wie es ist, in Deutschland zu sein, am anderen Ende der Welt in einer Pandemie. Ich bin aufgewachsen zum Großteil in Afrika. Also meine, beide meine Eltern sind Entwicklungshelfer. Und die haben zu dem Zeitpunkt, als meine Mutter schwanger war, in, im Sudan gelebt. Nach Sudan sind wir dann nach Marokko gezogen. Nach Marokko, nach Sambia, nach Sambia, nach Tunesien, wo ich dann wahrscheinlich die meiste Zeit verbracht habe äh, in meiner Kindheit mit fünf Jahren. Also fünf Jahre insgesamt war ich in Tunesien. Und dann aus Tunesien quasi zurück in die Heimat nach Berlin, wo ich immer so zu Hause war, weil meine Mutter halt daher kam, äh, daher kommt und ähm, wir halt immer in den Sommerferien mit der ganzen Familie dort waren. Also immer quasi drei Monate aus dem Jahr waren wir dann immer in Berlin bei meinen Großeltern. Und mein Opa und meine Oma sind die größten Basketballfans von mir seit Tag 1. Also der, hat, der kam zu meinen U12-Spielen mit dieser alten Kamera damals und ich war so schlecht. Also ich habe dieses Spiel auch letztes Mal wieder gesehen. Das, war, also, das tut mir echt leid, dass er sich sowas gegeben hat damals. Mit meiner Oma hatte ich echt eine, eine sehr, sehr gute Beziehung. Als ich äh, ein Kind war, war ich ja immer im Sommer bei denen, auch lange. Ne? Und manchmal waren meine Eltern natürlich auch nicht da und ich war quasi mit meiner Schwester da. Bei meinen Großeltern, es war immer echt eine super Zeit. Äh, genau, sie war, also sie war Erzieherin vom Beruf aus und äh, war <lacht> wahrscheinlich immer nicht immer leicht so mit, äh, mit mir. Als sie an Krebs gestorben jetzt vor drei Jahren, was super, super schwierig war für mich zu verarbeiten. Also genau und jetzt äh, habe ich mir halt auch ein bisschen natürlich danach vorgenommen, mehr für meinen Opa da zu sein und mit ihm mehr zu machen. So genau, deswegen bin ich auch ganz glücklich, dass ich in der Nähe von Berlin bin. Say something again. Your parents? Yeah, I can hear you now. <lacht> Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What you got going on today? Putting up the Christmas tree. Oh, that's big time. <laughs> that's gonna be your workout for the day, huh? Uh, you put up a tree? <laughs> no, I'm coming home to see your tree. That's my tree you working on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking about getting some. They have here, they have uh, lights that they like put in the windows, like almost like the candles, almost like the uh, the Hebrews do, but it's it's not the not the menorah. It's, it's something different that they put in the window, but it's it's nice to see. Like, because I walk outside and everybody have like a light in their window or something. It's oh, kind of, okay. yeah, it's kind of nice when I yeah. see that. That sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. And my yeah. Uh, my neighbor who okay. who stays under me, uh, she has a tree on her balcony that like lights up in the, in the night. So, I kind of when I come home, that's kind of my tree too. <laughs> <you good? laughs> I can't I can't steal none of the whole Christmas spirit. <laughs> I'm going to tell her, that's our tree. That ain't her tree. That's our tree. <laughs> stop. Stop. Uh, Fire her tree. <laughs> Get my own. <laughs> All right, I'll take your advice. They have some nice ones here. I should get one, but I, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, just for me to have myself. <laughs> it's not like you're real busy now. <laughs> Like yeah, but last time I, uh, I, was, I was listening to you, uh, you know, it was a tornado coming and I had to decide if I wanted to get hit or not. <laughs> this was my second year in college uh, during finals week. So we we're just about to go to, for, to break for the summer. The school year is over, I could go home for the uh, summer and, you know, just enjoy my summer at home. And uh, I'm, to I'm talking on the phone to my mom and uh, she's telling me, stay till Monday, 
you know, because I'm, I'm telling how hard I've studied all week and stuff for these tests. Uh, she said, stay till Monday, rest up, then just drive back. Uh, when you come back on Monday, it's be all good. I mean, what's a couple more days? You've been at school for months. So I was like, nah, it had been raining all all day. Yeah, I'm like, nah. Well, it had been raining majority majority of that week, if I can remember correct. I'm like, nah, I'm a, I, I really don't want to stay that long. I'm ready to come home now. And she was like, nah, just stay till Monday. So it finally cleared up. The rain had finally stopped. So I ended up packing my stuff up and going home. And uh, <clears throat> when I went home, uh, I went home, I went straight to sleep. I surprised my mom. I went home, went straight to sleep. Uh, I had left I had left a lot of things back at my apartment in school, though, because I was planning on going back, obviously. So when I went home, went to sleep, I woke up. I had maybe like 10 or 15 missed calls. People calling me, uh, where are you at? Where are you at? What you doing? Where are you at? Are you OK? Are you OK? And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm OK. What's going on? I'm, I'm not sure why people are calling me. I just went home. So uh my, one of my good friends, Pat, Patrick Hester, he had called me. He's like, man, I'm standing on your street. Where are you? Where are you? I'm like, dude, I'm at home in Little Rock. He was like, man, there's just been a huge tornado that come through here, and I can't even see your apartment anymore. The Zahl der Toten nach dem gewaltigen Tornado im US-Bundesstaat Missouri ist auf mindestens 116 gestiegen. Über 1000 Menschen wurden verletzt. Die meisten Opfer stammen aus der Kleinstadt Joplin, die durch den Wirbelsturm am Sonntag weitgehend zerstört wurde. Like your apartment is completely gone. Everything is gone. He was like, I don't even know, I don't even know where you would live. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I turned on the news. It's in, uh, on the news, it's right there at front page. Uh, one of the biggest tornadoes that ever come through the U.S. has came through my uh, school and tore everything apart, you know, and uh, I lost a lot of things, you know, all, all my stuff. So <clears throat> at that time, you know, that was like, if I would have stayed there, I would have been dead, you know, like I missed it by a couple of hours. I went home, went to sleep, I woke up, the tornado had came already, so. I had missed it by a couple hours, but uh, one thing I had lost in their tornado uh, was uh, um, I had gotten an award when I was in high school. A good friend of mine had died uh, on the basketball court. So he was uh, one of my childhood friends had died on the basketball court of a heart attack. And uh, I had got an award in his name uh, during my last year of uh, high school and I was carrying it with me everywhere. So I, had, I left it at home uh, in Joplin, Missouri, where I was staying. And, and the tornado and them taking that away. So that really hurt, hurt me as a younger, but you know, I still carry this memory in my heart, you know, other than, yeah. So, I mean, but I was blessed to miss that tornado. I, uh, it could have been a lot worse. I could have been there. If I'd have stayed until Monday, I would not be here right now, you know? So in that sense, it was good that I didn't listen to my mom. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure she, she happy I didn't listen to her at that time. You said, see, Ma, if I had listened to you, I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember thinking, God, thank you for him not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got a stubborn child, huh? Viele Amerikaner habe ich leider so kennengelernt, dass sie von oben herab, die sind halt was Besonderes und John ist einer, der hat sich integriert, der, der sagt, hier ist die Mannschaft, so ist die Mannschaft, so ist der Basketball in Wollmerstedt und er hat es genau so aufgenommen und hat das gemacht, der und hat immer leichte Schmunzeln drauf, sein Lachen, wenn man das Lachen hört, dann weiß man ja, oh jetzt kommt John Torwart, ja, das ist, ich mag, ich mag ihn wohl, toll, wirklich sehr cool. John ist ein aufrechtiger, lieber, netter Mensch, total zuvorkommen, ja, total hilfsbereit und genauso wie ich bin, so ist er fast auch, ja, wo er besser Basketball spielt als ich. <lacht> Der Amerikaner ist jetzt zwar hier, aber die Engländer sind zu Hause bei ihren Familien, was ich auch verstehen kann, wer will in dieser schwierigen Zeit nicht bei seiner Familie sein. Ja, man weiß nicht, wie es weitergeht beim Basketball, leider Gottes. Das ist mega schwer und ich kann die Jungs auch verstehen, ja.
and it hurts my heart because I'm too lazy work so hard two days until Christmas in which I'm going to spend Christmas with Phil and his family which is very nice of them to invite me to spend Christmas with them instead of being alone at home my mother's was really fearful of me bringing Corona back home, which is understandable. It's, she's very high risk. So the trip, we decided together that the trip was not worth it. Worth it. And this time I decided to listen to my mom. Of course, last time I didn't listen to my mom, it worked out for the best. But on this time, you know, I think it's more her decision at this point because I, I can't handle having brought something back to her that would affect her negatively and that would be just the worst situation. And she, she knows that too. She knows that that would probably break me as a person if I brought Corona back to her and some the worst case scenario would have happened. I need the gym. Uh, it's a place that I, I need while I'm in here in Germany. So if there's an opportunity for me to come work out, I have to take it because it's the only way I can I can keep my mind right or I will go crazy sitting at home all day. So I like to stay in shape. I like to work hard. And I like if and when the season starts back up, I would like to be in shape, make sure I don't get hurt or anything because the importance of us winning at this point, whenever the season starts, is very high. We can't, we can't not win after taking a break and doing Corona again. I'm, trying to get to the next level of Pro B. Jordan ist auch ein, auch ein sehr spezieller Mensch, der, glaube ich, sehr, sehr gut mit sich selber umgehen kann, der sehr, sehr gut alleine sein kann. Es ist für ihn schon eine besondere Situation. Klar, heutzutage gibt es äh, FaceTime und, und WhatsApp und Messenger und, und Skype, wo man quasi mit den Leuten in Kontakt bleiben kann. Aber im Endeffekt, wenn man abends das Licht ausmacht, ist man dann alleine und das ist, glaube ich, schon eine, eine besondere Situation. Ja. Und zum Glück ist ja jetzt seine, seine Freundin wieder hier. Ähm, das heißt, er hat jemanden, mit dem er, mit dem er reden kann. Oh, it's very nice just to have, you know, my girlfriend, some company, you know, someone to go through the quarantine process with. It's pretty nice. Someone to help cook. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely challenging because he takes eight months, nine months out of the year to come do this overseas. And the fact that he can't actually do it, he just can only get some practices here and there. Um, that's tough for any professional. Like you're sacrificing a lot coming to play a sport 
professionally and to not be able to do it, that's it's pretty tough. Basketball is equally as important as his family. Um, he's been playing his whole life, uh, practicing outside, you know, stuff, stuff like that. So um, I think basketball is really important and the fact that season this season season this year has been um, postponed and he hasn't been able to play. I think it's, it's tough for everyone and I know it's been tough on him because he just loves to play. At this point, I'm just okay with whatever happens. I feel like there's no need for me to stress at this point. Uh, things have been in limbo for so long. I'm just pretty much comfortable, but I learned to not expect anything and just ride with the flow. And that's definitely frustrating, especially when I see, you know, my friends out there still competing and playing in other leagues. And, you know, I want to get out there and showcase the things that I've been working on too. So that's definitely frustrating part of it. But it's hard to have hope or think that that's going to happen, especially, you know, I haven't seen, you know, majority of my teammates in months and we haven't even, they don't think that we're going to be working. So it doesn't look like it. Ja, es ist halt irgendwie so ein bisschen ein verlorenes Jahr. Schade ist es fürs Team, für die Spieler, für alle, auch für uns als Management. Das ist halt super bitter, ne? Die Mannschaft war ja so zusammengestellt für ein Ziel und das ist der Aufstieg. 